Hi, I'm Ron Balicki. Welcome back. We're in volume three now. So now in this series, this is where we're going to put everything together. I want to go through everything you've learned in the two previous volumes. We're going to stack it all together into this third series. So now I want to go from standing to throwing to the ground and then back up again. So let's get ready and let's go through volume three together. So now we're progressing along, we're coming back into footwork again. Now I'm going to add another twist to this. I want you to think of the box now. So you see this hourglass again here. I want you to think of a box. So right now if I looked at this as a square, not an hourglass, I want you to leave one foot in center always. You're going to step back, you're going to step to the base and then replace it. So I always want a foot to get, uh, uh, be placed in the middle. So if I come out of the box, I step in the middle of it again. So just continuously, just keep stepping back into the center of the box. Think of hitting all four corners and stepping into the center of the box. Do you see it? And it doesn't matter if I go to the left or I go to the right. So once I go out of the box, I jump back into the box, okay? So now I'm going to add that into my hourglass. If I do the hourglass and then if I do half that box I showed you, it switches my direction. Okay? I want to do this really slow. Watch this. Normally I'd step slide this way to keep on the hourglass. Right now I'm just going to step to this point. I'll step to this point and then it reverses my direction. Okay, I'm going to do it one more time. So normally it would be a step slide on this whole, uh, diagonal line, but I'm just going to step straight up, step to that point. Now I go back to the diagonal footwork. Okay, and it just reverses the direction that I come up on. So Troy's coming in again. I'm going to have him just stay with one triangle. That way you can see how it differs between the two of us when I add half the box. So we step together. So we're here, we're cruising, things are good. And then I add a twist and I switch my direction. Now if you look, we're still at the same distance away, but we're going opposite directions. Do this just for a minute so you can see. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put us back online together. See, I did half the box. It threw us together. If you notice, we're both going to the left or the right together. Now I'm going to switch it up again. Here I go, put it back together. Let me ask you to slow down a little bit. So watch, he steps slides, I just step back. It makes us go opposite directions. Now, I just step up, look it, we're together now. So the whole difference is a step slide diagonally or a straight back, which will change it. See, I could just stay in the box and stay center, uh, I would stay at the same distance with him. Or I could go back to the hourglass. and time. Okay, so the whole point is when I step, I have a choice. Step slide or step straight back. That will determine which way, which direction I go when I come back up. If I step slide, I'm going to come up to my right. If I just step back, it puts me up to my left. Okay, work that for a little while and then we're going to come back and give you more footwork later. Back at footwork again, adding a little bit more. You've got the hourglass, you have it with the partner, now we put another twist into it. So this time, as we're into the hourglass, if you remember, we had the full hourglass, we had the half box that I put into it to switch the direction. Now we're going to go to turnarounds. 
Okay, so what I mean by turnarounds are I want to flip directions. Okay, so if we're going in the hourglass and for whatever reason I need to turn around, I want this to stay in cadence. Now if you look, I'm doing constant changes right now. So I'm still hitting the point with my feet or I can go back to the hourglass. Okay, so I can go one, two, back, around. I don't have to do a 360, I could just do a 180. I could go one and work it this way. Or I could turn around and come back this way. Okay, so right now I want you to think, if you step at the point, I could step slide, I could do the half box like I showed you, or I could just step through on that diagonal line and it switches my, uh, completely switches my direction to where I'm doing a 180 and I'm fighting behind me. Okay, so if you look at it, I can go half box, switch my directions, and turn around. So now you yeah, got the back to the camera. If I want to face the camera, I step through. The turnarounds can be on the way up. I can just swing all the way through. Do you see it? or on the way back, I could just turn it and face. Okay, so that's the turnarounds. Train that a little while. We'll come back and we'll give you more. Going in a little further, now we do the turnarounds with a partner. Okay, so watch this. Remember we're on that hourglass. I moved out a little more so you can get all three of us in here. So now this is a, a three person game. Same thing, we start the same way and all three of us should stay at the same distance. Okay, so we're all doing a little dance. But now I do my switches and we stay in cadence with each other. Okay, so right now let's slow down a little bit. So if you look, I stay right in cadence and at the same distance as we did before, when it was just Troy and I. But now Willie's in there, so I have to give him some attention, or back to Troy, or back to Willie. That's it, so this is the turnaround. Now what really trips everyone up is when I add the box to it. Pretty good. All right, we didn't mess this up. That was good. God, I don't want to mess them up so bad, but they're getting it. So, this is the turnarounds with the box. and time. Okay, so just to recap, we had the turnarounds, you know this, where we switch direction, you see it? Okay, then we added the box to it. So the box was this, the half box, and then back to the hourglass, the half box, then back to the hourglass. And then you just team up with your buddies, work it, and you'll start to get, uh, get the flow. Now we're going to go into silo position in your footwork. So let me explain this. I, I said this earlier that as you get older, the art will modify for you to where you'll be able to keep doing it. So an older man who might not have the flexibility will go into this position right here. Okay, you can come out of it. You see it? So he'll go here. If you're a little younger, they might have you squat into it or you might have to go all the way to the ground. All right, so this is the silo position. Now, why would I want to do this? You got to think of the environment. If I were on, uh, all right, let, let's go towards the Philippines, a muddy, slippery slope where I think I'm going to fall or I, I might not be able to stabilize myself, they'll go into this position, okay? Or if I have to go all the way to the ground, they'll drop. It's very stable here, 
Okay? Picture being uh, in an icy environment. You might be able to use this or kind of incorporate that in. But what we're going to do is we're going to put that in to our footwork. So you remember the whole hourglass and turn around. So as I go, I want you to step into the silo. Then you're going to hop out and you go right back in to the hourglass. So I'm going to do that again for you. So as I go, I step back right here. You see it? Then I just kind of spring out and it puts me right back into the hourglass. So as I come back, see low, come out. If I don't want to do the squatting, I just step back here. And then I just come out of it. Okay? So as I go up, I can go into it forward. Okay? You can do the turnaround from it. You see it? So when I come up, I can go into the C low, just spin, step, and then come out. So right now, I want you to concentrate on just going back into the C low position as low as you could go, and then come back out. You'll see it's a good workout on the legs. So work that into your uh, hourglass footwork. I can go back and then out. You see it? Okay. Try that out. Back to the lead hand series. Now, this one I want you to go easy with. You're gonna, you can really hurt somebody with this one. It's going to look a little strange. This might be really unorthodox for a lot of people, but when Willie comes in, when he punches, I want you to think of hitting the hand. Now, I'll be honest with you, there are a lot of times you do this and it, it might not score where you want to. With a little practice again, you'll start to get it. Now, the target is almost what is showing out of my gloves. When he goes here, I hit it. So we're not really too padded up for each other here. So we kind of respect each other and we go. Now look at what Willie does. Sometimes he slaps it for training. You still get it. Sometimes you just want to touch it just, just to know. But a lot of times when it comes in, I almost aim for here, uh, right here in my training. Because this really smarts. And if you don't believe me, go grab your training partner, do it once. All right. So when I punch, he hits it. And he punches, see I hit it right here. So you just go pat like that and just pick it off. So this is more of a long range tool. If I'm out here and he's going to go, like, now I can come back in. See it? If I can get that shot right here in the knuckle, it opens up the line. Because most people, like if he hits me, do it, pat, they go like that and then you'll get it. And you'll see. You'll see this will come through for you. All right? So just go pat and then right there. So we just hit it right here. Now we're not hurting each other right now. A lot of times, let me spin you. A lot of times, with this, this is nice with this glove, with this pad, because when he punches, a lot of times I just hit the, hit the knuckle there. I don't have that luxury, so when he's going for me, he's going to get me. So I just go like that. This gives it to me. Pap. There. There. Or I can attack the four. I just attack in here. There. Ooh, got it. <laughs> it's okay. There. 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 Okay? So this is what we call knuckle to knuckle. All right? So now, the next one, now I don't look at it as more of a face shot. Now it's like a guy who's going to give me the shot to the solar plexus or the, or the stomach. So when he goes, they, they just knee it. So he goes, do it, he knees it. One, two. Again, go easy. This one, when it hits, when it hits, it hits good. Sorry. It's good. All right, so go. One, two. One, two. So we just sit there and just raise the knee into it. Okay? So that's the next one in the series. Okay, moving on with that concept, when he comes in, I want you to stomp. So he's going to go one, stomp. Okay, so he, uh, he parries the hand into the knee and he kicks. Now they always tell you, cross the T. Okay, if you go this way, it could slip off and it might land you in a bad position where he can get you. But we go one, two. So back and forth, one, two, one, two. Respect, respect his leg. If you hyperextend it, you're going to lose your partner. All right. One, two, one, two. That's it. Now, same concept. He comes in. I go one and I kick the body. So Willie's going to go one, kick the body. So one, two, one, two. So this is for me trying to hit him right here. So whoop, yes, that's it. So you go pat, and then he's going to pull it right into the knee and then he's going to go to the body. Same thing. He comes in at me I go, pat, pat, like that. So I'm just trying to get this knee to here and then toe kick him. For training, I usually use the flat. I'm not going to use the toe. He's not going to like me a lot if I keep doing that. Okay? 
Now the last one I want to show you, when he pu uh, punches, back at the face. This is called Pagagi. Just lean back, sway back. All right, this is found in the Lameco system. They call it caballero footwork, where they drift back and they come back in. So when he goes, I go whoop, and then I come right back at him. So just he'll do the Pagagi. Pagagi, Pagagi, see it? So I, I kind of I rock back and forth just like that, okay? One, two, one, two. So this is the Pagagi, okay? So that's the last one that I want to do for right now. We'll be back with more. Continuing on now with the Egyptian series. Joe's back in. I'm going to repeat everything that we've done. Parry, gunting, elbow, wipe the eye, collapse the arm, elbow, press him down to the ground. Okay. Now when I press him down, I just release it and I hook it under the leg. First one, press. Second one, if he had a weapon, I might step on it right there. Third one, I cross and I put it on. Okay, if I couldn't get the arm in or if he got it out, I will tuck it and then I pull it on. Next one we call three points. I'm going to hit this point, the shoulder, and I cradle the head. That puts it on here, okay? I can make it a little meaner if I want, or you could just go easy with, with your partners. That way they're not going to hate you for this, okay? So again, in uh, the V arm lock, first one, second one. Now this one's pretty cool, watch this. I hook his head in my bicep, and I reach over and I grab his pec. That puts it on, okay? So again, let me turn over this way just a bit. So I go up, then I hook, and then I just put it on right there. You see that? Okay, let me repeat them. One, two, three. He gets that arm out, I tuck it in, all right, head comes up, three points. Then I'm gonna go right over, grab the pec. Now I come down here. This is, uh, the first one is if the hand's up, we do double branch up. Do you see that? So right now, double branch up. And then the last one is where this whole thing gets the name, the Egyptian. So you think about a hieroglyphic, okay? So you just put the lock on right there. So from the start, on the ground, I won't do the takedown again. Not yet anyway. So we go one, two, three. It gets out. Tuck it. Four, five, six. Then I go right here. If the hand is up, that's my seven. Turn it over, that's my eight. Okay. So let me stand up, last time. Come on on this side. <clears throat> One. Take them down. So I just hook it. One. Okay, number two. Number three, he gets it out, tuck it. Four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the Egyptian series. Train that one, and we'll come back with some more grappling a little later. Okay, come on. Continuing on with this Chieftain series. So now, we have them. One, I did the split. I pulled in, head, elbow. See the wrist lock takes them down. This was my one. I put it down for the two. I stand it up with the three. I move around, pick them up, turn them over. Let me scoot you over this way, please. Spin, uh, legs back towards the wall. There you go, that way the camera can see us. So right here, the knees come in and I flex it. I sling it through here for the branch down, flex the wrist, grab the digit, step over. This is gonna just twist. See the way I pull it in and twist it? I stand on this foot, put it on. This wraps the face, puts it on. My bicep goes on, the chieftain itself. Okay, so now the next one, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna grab this arm and I kick it through here and I put it on. Let me just turn your head a little bit so you can comfortable. 
I, this is the next one. So I put it on right here, okay? So right from here, I will hook this, and then I will go sling it right here. Then they come center, both knees up, and then they go towards his feet. All right, I come in, I drag him back up. Let me scoot you just a little bit this way so I can stay in frame. So I drag him up right there and I just lay and I put it on, okay? I, I go to the feet and then I roll over right there, okay? So one more time, just stay there. So we were here before. We did the flex, the wrist, the digit, over, step, face. I'm not going to keep killing them by putting the locks on it. Wrist lock, chieftain itself. Brings us to the new point, okay? So then I sling this through. This foot kicks through. Put the lock on right here, okay? Swing the leg over. They call this a Lacosta lock. Uh, this from John Lacosta, uh, one of the instructors in the system. And what he'll do is he'll grab the back of his head and he'll put that on. You see how I just kind of lay out? Just hyperextending the arm right there. So right there, I just put that lock on, okay? Then I come back, I just sit on his back. This goes on. This is uh, just straight arm bar. Then I'm just gonna switch directions and I go into the Lacosta lock facing the feet, okay? So now, when I come back, this goes straight arm bar, but I dig, move your head up so I don't have to kick you, but I dig both feet under his body and I just lay out. Let me, let me put that under you so I don't hurt you. I usually do this without shoes on, but for this, I had shoes on right now. So, but they'll just lay out and I'll put this on. So now I go right to the floor and I look at his feet and then I'm gonna turn over and I put it on and I look to the head here, okay? Try that out, work that for a while and then I got more for you. All right, coming back into the Chieftain series, let's finish this off now. So now watch. All right, one, two, we collapse it. We've been through this, I bring them down. I'm gonna go easy just because this is repetitive and I know it's starting to accumulate on them. First one, I need them for the rest of the video so I gotta go easy. So one, then I put it down for two. Stand it up, three. Come around, turn them over. Let me swing you around again. All right, four, five. Right here, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then right here is the thirteen. Okay? Now, drag this through, put it on here. Now I'm gonna come up right here. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm gonna go out to right here first. Then I come up center, then I hook it, and I go to the low line. Now I'm gonna go easy just so. I don't kill them with this, but they lay out. Actually, the first one they lay out is actually just straight like that. Then I go and I face his feet, and then I'm going to go right here for the last one. Okay? All right, now, at times, I have a choice to end this here. Let me scoot you just a little bit this way. Come on over. Thank you. If I'm here, sometimes they'll roll out. You see it? So he could tuck, and they'll roll. So what I want you to do is I want you just to flip your feet around and you're going to go right here. Now look at this. If you could come in, let me kind of get you scoot over. Check this out. When I'm here, normal arm bar is normally here, which is good. But he can bite. He can manipulate my leg over. There's a lot of factors that, you know, he could run out, start to run. You don't know what you're going to get. This is pretty good. For the street, I like this. Watch this. Bite. Manipulate my leg over. I could sit there. I don't even need to hold it. I just sit here like this and just relax as I do this. See, it's, it's pretty good. It's, it just locks in real tight. I can make it real tight and choke them. See it? Or I can just pull this on and get the arm bar right there. So right here, I'll lighten it up. Sorry, Joe. Okay. So this is going to be the second to the last movement. All right. So we have it here. The last one is they go right here and they catapult them and they call it pancake them over and they just come right back to this lock to end the series. All right, so let me run through this one more time and uh, get this all done with. So one, hit, collapse, bring them down. Okay, I go into the first one, wrist lock, 
bring it down, flex the wrist, gooseneck, stand it up, gooseneck, come over, flip them over. Fla uh, sorry, first is flex it, then knees, sling it, wrist, digit, step over. If the hand comes up, step on it. Let me kind of swing you this way, start to turn. Thank you. Okay. Now, the foot slings around the face, put it on, B uh, the bicep comes right here, and then the chieftain itself, I just lean in. Kick through. This is gonna go here. I come out, I'm gonna put my back to camera for a second. This squats and sits, okay? Actually, I wanna go here. I'll keep doing that wrong, and then come here. Not that it's wrong, it's just what I'm feeling right now. Then I'm gonna put it on looking at his feet. Now watch, I just go right here, I put them both underneath, I lay out and I put that on. Now I can turn and look there or I can turn and look here. Sometimes guys will roll out. So if he flips over, I just flip this and this is going to put it on right here. This is the arm bar. Or I catapult, swing, and then I'm just going to go right here to end the series. Okay, so that's the Chieftain series. Take your time with it. I know it's a lot and it doesn't mean that you're going to be able to use it in the order we do it. But each lock could be independent or you could string them together. And it doesn't mean I have to go from one to two. There are times you'll go one to number seven, back to number three. It just depends on how the person is. It's just a dictionary of motion. And you can kind of learn how to flow with it, how to go from one lock to the next. So I think it has a lot of value. Okay, play with that. I'm going to come back in, I'm going to close out this Gaja series that I want you to know. So, so far you have one to four, let's take it to one to six. Joe's in again. Let me put you on the side again, it shows a little better over here. So, one, up, I hit, you continue on. Two, he stretches away, I catch the close side, I tuck, I knee, I take him down. Number three, he leans in towards me, I grab the far side, double grab the head, pull him over, drop my knee. You know this already. All right, then we're gonna go one. Right here, he leans away, I didn't get him. I go right to the parallel cant. And remember, the name of parallel cant is his arms parallel and he can't believe it hurts that much. Okay, that's where we got the name from. Okay, so now we're gonna go into what we call Bursalot number five. So Bursalot, it's, a lot of people think it's from Burma and it's Silat if you know what Penchak Silat is, but it's not, it's still Filipino, it means to do to do silat, okay, it's Filipino. So one, when I come up, I hit and then I grab. Now right now, if the hand were to open, they go right here. It looks like you're not gonna be able to get this, but I have gotten it playing around. But what I mean by playing around, like we're sitting there sparring and maybe the guy moves and I've gotten into this position. You, you'll get it, okay, or there's a good chance you can get it. But this is the position here, okay? And a lot of times what they'll do is they'll step on this foot and they'll do it makes it pretty uncomfortable. Okay, so right here, one, two, after I hit, I grab the neck and then I just step here and I put the lock on. Okay, that's my burst lot number five. The last one that I want you to do is almost like the second one where we tuck, but this time I grab the chin and check this out, I grab my bicep or forearm and I put it on. It's already put in a lock and you just think of running them into a wall into another person, into a tree, whatever object's in the way. So let me spin you on this side for that. So one, I go right up. Up, I grab, I tuck. This will go right here. Grab it, and then I run them into something, okay? One of the ways I'm gonna go real easy with this, okay? When we go here, and I do the uppercut, and they tuck, if he's looking at me, they say slap it. Slap the face, and then turn it. You see it? Now once I go here, I just put it on and I hold them. See, I'm not too worried about this arm. It usually will come out. It's cool if it stays. If it doesn't, it's okay. What Joe can probably tell you if you were able to talk at this moment is he's got a neck lock going. You see it? I just need his shoulder, my arm across his face or his neck, and I grab the chin. Right there, I just dun -dun 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 -dun, I run over and slam him right into a wall. Okay? So let's run through the six again. One. Up, one, two, three, four. Just keep punching. Two, 
up, he leans away, I grab the neck, I tuck it, I knee, remember I could bring him down, could put the lock on, either lying or sitting, okay? Next one, he grabbed the far side, because he leaned in, roll him, I drop a knee, drop a knee, move the head, kick the back of the neck. Come on, this side, please. Now he, he sways back, I go, oh, I can't get it. So I just move right to here. I just drop it. Puts us right back in to the uh, Egyptian series, okay? Now we go into the burst a lot. One, when I go here, I just grab, and this puts it on. I could step on the foot to add to it, okay? And then the last one, sorry about that. So the last one, when I go, I tuck it. I slap the face, turn the head, and I put the lock on. Running, run them into something. So that is the Gaja series that I want you to have. All right, continue on with throwing. Now we're gonna go to the Willis. We're gonna step to the inside. So let, let me just do this. Before I did the Willis and I stepped here and I cut it, now I want to go to the inside and I want to do the sweep. So we're going to go one, two is here, all right? If I swing out and hit, they'll elbow and then they just cut the line right here. See, this could pull here, all right? There's many ways that I can use my hands to get into it, but the, what I want you to get now is just the leg sweep. That's my main, main emphasis. So one, if I hit, See, I hit it here. If I don't like that, if he turned out of it, see, I just switch it, and then I come back here, and I can get this sweep here. Now, I'm going to go really lightly, so Troy won't get all upset with me, but if I stepped into here, and if he spins out of it, no, 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 spin out that way, yes. Now, when I go here, they slap it. See what it's back did? And they pull it. Sorry, Troy. Okay, one more time. Let me swing you this side. All right. <clears throat> So when I go like this, maybe my first intention is to go here, but I don't have it. Maybe he punches, well hook me. If I go like that, I might swing out to this side. See right here, they pop that and they pull this, okay? The popping of the back forces him to flex forward, putting, transferring all the uh, weight onto the front foot, leaving the rear foot light to pull, okay? So one, see if I go like that. See I go whoop, one, in, see I hit, and I go here. So that was hit the back and then I pull it right here. Let me go to the rear leg. So now, one, if I do this, and if I knee and he steps back, that's where they'll go in, right here. They go whoop, right here. They hit that back, and then they'll pull it right here. And you just go into your boxing. Okay, one more time. If I go one, see, I need to get to the rear leg. Maybe I elbow in, maybe I knee in. Oh, he stepped out. So I slap it, and I go right here. And then I go into the Willis. Okay, so. That's the Willis on the inside because my pull is right here. So now we also go on the inside, but with more of the reap. So if I go here, all right, when I come in and I knee, I could step here. See, this is gonna reap it here. Okay, see, I could step in and go for the takedown right like that. One more time. See, I might, I might just jam it like that. See, I go, oh, put the knee in, I step. Now I just reap it. See, I knee and I go right here. Okay, let's say I want the rear leg. So if I go in and I knee it, he steps back, now I step this way, and then I'm just gonna wipe it here. Let me turn you on the other side. So to go to the la uh, rear leg, one, I go here, elbow, whoop, knee, he steps back, I just follow it in, and now I just step in to uh, wipe here. This is all under the umbrella of the Willis, okay? One, they also call this seal hig. So if he steps out, I just track it, okay? Now right here, I just sweep, and I step back. So either the term Willis or Seelhig. Remember at the start of the video I said I might give it multiple names. Depends on the influencer who gave it to us. Okay, one more time. After I hit, I step down, he steps out, swing it. Okay, reap, step in, and then right there, that's the Willis that I want you to have. Let's take it to number 12 now in the lock flow series. So again, parry, elbow, he goes back, one, hook, two,
comes out, I grab it, I lift it, three, four, five. Six goes to the, what we call the figure four. See how it looks like a number four? That's the figure four. Then I'm going to walk it out, flex the wrist, both thumbs in the metacarpal, hook the thumb, curl it into the gooseneck lock. I step back out, I grab two digits for now. Later, one digit could break it, so I just grab two, put my hand on the bicep, and out here. Remember, the hand, the closer into the face, the more pain. Out here, he could still feel it, but if you're really going to apply it, you want to go in tight. Think of touching his uh, wrist to his chin. If I go in this far and I drop it and drop my weight, it's going to be pretty painful. Okay, so let me do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now watch this. I grab it and I put it up to the ceiling. That's number 10. You see it? So if you could come in and look at this, when we're here, I was just in a parallel camp. I reach in and I grab. See this? I grab, put my thumb right on the back of his thumb, and I grab the pad of his hand right here. Then I just go here and I go up to the ceiling with it. Okay, this one's pretty bad, right? All right, so there's my 10. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven is going to go right here. So from the ten, it went up, but if he drops his elbow, I just pack it in and I go here. Remember, I still have the digits. Okay, so that's my eleven. Number ten, number eleven. Now I'm going to switch hands and I grab those digits. I grab the far shoulder. See how his elbow goes on my bicep? And this is 12. And this is it. This is just come on with me. All right? You know, you, this way it's more of a compliance thing. I'm going to hold him and I want to keep him. Okay? So again, one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's one to twelve in the lock flow series. Now that you have the twelve standing lock flow series, we're going to go a little further with it. So watch this. One, remember we elbow, put on the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, then I grab number twelve. Now I want you to just track it over and then you're going to repeat it on the opposite side of the body. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Switch fingers, grab the shoulder. This is number twelve. Track it, go back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Switch. This is the number 12. Track it, go back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So you could just keep going left, right, left, right, left, right, as long as he could take it. That's it, work that. All right, we're back into the lead hand series. It's getting a little advanced now, so Willie comes in. All right, do you remember the very first thing I taught you today with this was the decup? All right, so he does it, you do it, catch the decup, 
I catch the decoup. Now, I want you to think of this. When he does the decoup, my head's drifting out to, to the outside. So when he goes, he just kind of shifts and leans to the outside. Then we're going to add the hit. Now, before when he went, I've already shown you to hit the bicep, but we're not going to hit the bicep. We're going to attack the face. You do it to me. He goes right there. Attack the face. That's it. One more time. That's it. Again, again, again. That's it. So now if we just trade back and forth, it starts to look the same. You'll even lose track. Whose turn is it? But the idea is uh, just to get, build up that response. When you see the blow coming, I just shoot at the face. And he goes, I go, he goes, I go, he goes, I go, he goes, I go. Okay? Looks the same. Main difference is one person's catching. It, it's almost like it turns into de coup and he does the paalis. On, on the first one, or the parry, which brings us to the second one, the pa'awas. When he goes, I just parry and I hit. He's gonna, even though he initiates, I should parry and score. It starts to blur. You don't know whose turn it is. And really, it's a timing thing. I can counter him, he can counter me with it. So if we both go with it, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Looks virtually the same. I know it's got to be confusing, so I'm going to slow this down. First one, I catch and I hit. Second one, I parry and I hit. See, the only difference between the two is this and this. Might not mean much to you right now, but it, it will. When the blow comes in, and if you don't have the time or your hand's not in position to get to here, you better have it here, and uh, vice versa. Okay? All right, so right here is what we're doing now is the pa'alis, the split entry with the pa'alis. And the difference is, is I'm not attacking the limb, I'm attacking the face. Okay? Does that make sense to you? Okay, so now we're going to go back to the pa'alis. It's almost like paglibut, though. It's, I always argue, what is it? Because you, you do the pa'alis, but it sneaks in with that elbow. Let uh, Willie do this one because it shows a little more. Is he's just going to come in with the elbow. Do that again. One. So now, he's going to go a little further with it. Now, uh, do, do the there. And then he's going to step in with the hack. Look at what he does to my feet. So even if I'm not hurt, he puts me in a position where he can floor me. Right there, go, bang, that's gonna drop me. All right, so when I go, I go here. So I just step and hack, boom, and I'm just gonna take it, okay? All right, you do one elbow, hack there. So we say elbow inside or seco inside. I go here, hack, and I hit. Okay, Willie goes, one, two, hack, and then he puts me down right there, okay? So now, let's recap this, okay? Catch with the hit. Sorry, I should do it with the hit. Catch with the hit. Parry with the hit. And then right here in hack, step, and hit. Okay, so again, you had the decoup and move out. You had the parry, and you got your head moved out. Then I come inside, I elbow, step, and go. Now the last two that I want you to have is going to be, he punches, I parry him, I want to put my shoulder under his armpit. They call us a baga. If I can go in uh, to, to uh, let you know what the rear hand is doing, I jam this. But when I go in, I can bump it. Okay? You do that to me? They can see it better? See, he bumps into me. Okay? So as soon as I go here, now watch this. I go, whoop, right there, I slip it in. Now, I kind of showed you it before. This is a little bit different. Remember before we went vertical gunting to the uppercut? Well, this goes what we call a baga, right here. I go here, I bump him, and then I uppercut. You do that to me? There. And then he bumps me in an uppercut. Okay, Sorry. do it again. Bump, and upper. Bump me a little bit. Boom, that's it. See, he creates that little gap he needs to slip it in. If you go here, when I go like that, I just up, okay? Boom, up, that's it. You see it? So dead slow. Go real slow. One. Come on in. Bump. Uppercut right here. Okay? So that's what we call a baga. A baga is a shoulder. Okay, now I'm going to go a baga one more time. One. I bump. I hit. I pull that bicep. You see it? And they hit the deltoid. Okay? Now, if the face is open, yeah, we definitely take it. But you will see if he does it, you do it to me. One. If he bumps me, he uppercuts. When he pulls, usually I'll put a hand up because I think that's going to hit my face, but the shoulder's open. So literally, I've seen it to where when they go here, they'll run, 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 and they'll just keep beating that as they run because this guy's trying to cover his face. Okay? And if you could pull it here, oh, sorry. If I could pull it here, it really flexes this and a pretty good shot. Okay? So 
One, bump, uppercut, pull, and bang, he's gonna hit it. You do it again, they got a better view of you. One, bump, pull, yep, yeah, that's it. So, bump, bump, upper, pull, hit. That's it, one more time. One, bump, that's it, okay? So let's recap all of this. Okay, da cup and hit, parry and hit. You're gonna parry, scoop, elbow, you can hack, step, and go. Okay, you do the next two because they can see it better. Split entry, jam the gun, bump in, uppercut. And you would just keep boxing if you, didn't, if you didn't think you could grab the arm. But if you could grab the arm, bump, upper, pull the arm, he hits it as many times as he can get away with hitting it until I get out of it. Okay, so let's stop right there. We'll be back with more. All right, you're coming to the end of the lead hand series now. So Willie's going to come in. All right, now you remember the de coupe? The catch. You got to remember it's a complete language. So to catch, there's several ways that we catch it. We can catch here. We can just catch here. That's what I've already taught you. We can catch here or we can catch here. I want to cover all three. All right, so first one, when he jabs and I go here, I just catch right here. That will drag down. And then you can go into all either the striking or the grappling stuff. Okay? So I'm all mic'd up. It's kind of hard for me to follow my back. So guess what? Willie really gets to take the pain. So when he goes, one, I just grab right here. See, this will just drag. Okay? So come on back up. I'm not going to keep taking you down. So one grab and then pull him to the ground. Okay? The second one, when he goes, one, I scoop it, full snake. And then they're going to pull it to the ground. Okay? So one more. One, grab pull to the ground. The third one is when he goes, I go into split. This is also the cup. I've caught it and then this just pressures it right to the ground. See, we're right into the locking. Okay, so you have all three of what we call the de coup series. One, on top. Full snake, split, catch, and then you take him down. So now, the inside gunting is going to go. So Willie's going to, when I jab, because Willie, it'll show for camera better, he goes to the inside gunting. He parries, see, and he's going to hit the bicep there. There. So real slow again. Inside parries, and he's going to hit. Okay? Turn your shoulders the opposite way. Turn them this way. Can you do the inside gunting from there? It's difficult. It's very difficult. He's going to be pulling it right into his face. But if he goes into what we call the false lead, he can get it right there. So now look at, check this false lead out. If he punched at my face, it would appear that he couldn't reach me. But because he's got that twist to his body, when he untwists with the other hand, it goes a lot further. You see it? See, because if he did the gun, inside gun on the side, so now this would be as far away. Untwist and punch, it's still, uh, I mean, it's closer, but right now, if he does that false lead, and if he were in deep enough to hit the bicep, it looks like, ah, oh, that's all he's got. But once he untwists, it gives you a lot more depth. Okay, so now the next one is going to be just uppercut. All right, so when I go, now I've already taught you to cover, cover it, and upper. Or you did the gunting and upper, and then we did the shoulder and uppercut. Now it's just uppercut by itself. When I go one, he just shoots that in. Now this one it takes talent. He's got to drift out just enough to get his face out of my line of fire, and he's going to put it in. But when it works, ah, oh, it looks so good. It's great. One, it's totally unexpected. If he comes at me, there it is, right there. So I just shoot it up right through here, okay? So you do it again. One, uppercut. So I want you to train that back and forth, okay? So when I punch, boom, and I'm going to put my hand here. Punch my hand. That's it. So a lot of power. One more time. That's it. Now the next one is one of my favorites. I get this all the time, and I get it in sparring. When you're gloved up, you're not hurting your partner but it's a lot of great training for the street is you're just going to hook the bicep. You do it, boom, there, and come at me, come at me. I go at you, there. See it? So we're just slapping the bicep right now, but if we start to put it in a little bit, oop, yeah, you start to feel it's already different. Yeah, it starts to kill. It's good. You'll see, like, if you're sparring, you'll get a guy who puts his hands up, bop, and you just keep going. If you're gloved up, they're like, eh, didn't hurt, but it's not what it's made for. It's not made for the ring made for the street when you got those knuckles digging in. Okay, so right now we had the, uh, you had the uppercut, shoot the uppercut up, and you have the hook to the bicep. This is gonna bring us to the end of this. Now we're gonna go into the angle one, 
in the angle two. So right now, if I punch, this is the angle one right there, and then he could backhand off it. Do it again. That's it. So you'll say it looks like the slant, but it's different. See, right now the slant, when I showed you that before, the uh, uh, panastas, it slides up. This one beats. So he's, he's beating the arm, and then he's going to beat the face. One more time, go bump, bump, just do it. One, two, that's it. So you go at me, one, two, one, two, back and forth, right there. Okay, time. All right, so now, let's say you swing the angle one to hit my arm, and I faked you. If it ends up here, he's going to come back at the angle two, back to the angle one. Okay, so it goes one, two, three. All right, so when he goes, right there. So when he comes out, you go hit it. Or you could just train it to put your hands here. When he punches, you could hit here. So just put it on the inside for now. And you do it. One, two. That's it. So just train here for the first one. Your turn. There, my turn. Good. All right, time. In closing, we have the decoupe. You have it on top. You have the decoupe full snake. You have it from the split entry take down. Willie had the inside ginting, and he hits it. Okay, he can uppercut. Yeah, all right. Or he could hook the bicep. That's it. Okay. Then we went to the angle one and the angle two. So one came in, I can hit this way. Or the two comes in if he passed the center line. So I swing pass with the one. I faked you. The two, and then he hits the face here. All right. So the two could come here. One, two. So you do that. Two. That's it, okay? All right, so that's the end of the lead hand series. This all gets incorporated later into almost every drill you do. It's not that you'll have to do all 43 or whatever variations I just gave you. What you'll do is you'll pick one of those and then you'll add it to what you're doing. You'll, you'll see when we come back. Okay, let's finish up this 1-2 series now. Now we're going to take it all the way up to number 12. So you're going to hit the end in this first series. So we're going to come in, recap the entire thing up to 8. Parry, gunting, elbow, wipe the eye, go to the throat, shove him. Cross, hook, cross, I put the kick in. Second one, parry, gunting, rear elbow, step in and hack. One, two, three, kick. Third one, long range. One, two, three, kick. Fourth one, straight to the hack, step in. One, two, three, kick. Okay, the next one, you're going to go to the outside, swing it, and shove. One, two, three, kick. Outside, swing it, and hack with the step. One, two, three, kick. Now we went to the first elbow. From the outside, I elbow, I shove. One, two, three, kick. Then we went to the rear. Elbow, hack and step. One, two, three, kick. That's where we left it. Now, the next one's pretty, pretty, pretty close to the same as the number seven. So when you go here, you start with the rear elbow, go to the front elbow, and then shove. One, two, three, kick. So we're just doing a double elbow. Again. <laughs> Okay, slow it down. Kick. Okay, next one. We're going to go to lead elbow to the rear elbow, step and hack. One, two, three, kick. That's our number 10. Lead elbow, rear elbow, step and hack. One, two, three, kick. <laughs> Kick it. Okay. The number 11 goes to what we call a split gunting. So one, I do the split and I shove. So go right on my chin. I go right here. Right to the shove. 
One, two, three, kick. Right there. One more. And kick. All right. Last one, virtually the same. I do the split, I swing and hack. One, two, three, kick. Again. One more. Okay, let's recap once again. One, shove. It was where the elbow went in. Two, rear elbow hack. Long range shove. Long range hack. Outside, swing to the shove. Swing to the hack. Elbow, shove. Rear elbow to the hack. Now you double up on the elbow, rear first. Rear to lead to shove. Lead to rear to hack. Split gunting to the shove. Split gunting to the hack. That's one, two series, one to 12. Coming back into who, but now we're going to start to go over knee and elbows. So if you watch this, the first one I call knee who, bud, and everybody kind of goes, what? You know, knee who, bud, but you'll understand it when you see it. So let's just do one for one right now. So we're going back to this one for one format. And as I'm going, I'm going to thrust a knee at Joe, and he's going to pick it up and return back to who, bud. So when we go, I go one, and then right back in, okay? Again, you go. In and right back in. That's it. That's it. So let's slow it down now. I want to show what's going on. You're in one for one who but and then I thrust the knee, he picks it up and then goes. Now you're gonna ask, should I do it when when should I employ the knee? Is it when his hand is up or when is it when his hand is down? Both are correct. You have to pick it up. Who knows when the guy's going to throw a knee at you, right? So if I go here and he throws it, I better scoop it and pick it up and go back in. Or if I'm up and he throws it, works out nice for me. You just don't know when he's going to throw it. The idea is if I go here, he's got to have it. If I go here, he can either stay down or sometimes, uh, do it again, please. Or if it's down, he might have to make a little scoop and then pick it up. You'll see, it just goes real fast to get there. You'll, you'll make it, or you'll get need. <laughs> okay, so when we go, just go a little bit. Just knee whenever you want. That's it. I'll let you throw some knees up and go. Good hit. Okay, so slow it down. So knee, and then right back. He can knee, and then right back. That's knee who bud, okay, or using the knee in who bud. So now with that, I want to go into elbows. So we can do it from the five if you want to learn a flow point, or the one, it doesn't matter. But I just bring the elbow in. He will stop, ride it over, trap it down, and he elbows the face for now. It can be the bicep. But right now, just at the face, because it teaches me to get that stop and then to pass it over. You see it? OK. 
Okay, let's slow it down. So I stop, pass it, trap, elbow. See, this pass is really a hit. So if he goes in, boom, I, I get that hit. So one and then two. That's it. Hit it there. So I stop, hit, trap, elbow. Stop, hit, trap, elbow. If he's tired of me hitting him, just rise up with it. Like I said, it could be at the bicep, but it stops the drill for now. So we just put it at the face, back and forth. That is to use the seco or the elbow. Okay, so now the next one is we're going to pull down and hand it off. Do you remember earlier I had said that you grab and you pinch to solidify the muscle? That way you can deaden it. Well, that's what we're doing here. When we go, I just go one, two, and I pinch it. And I elbow now. He just stops it. I'm leaving it at the face for drill sake, but each time he does it, I do it. He pinches, gets it nice and tight because he would really be blasting the elbow. I mean, uh, blasting my bicep with his elbow. So we just hand it off. It's like a handoff. I just go one and I hand it off and pinch. You see it? Okay. So now I kind of taught four basics. I kind of put them all together for you. Now watch. We did the knee and we can go back into the one for one. That's our first. Okay, see it? Then the next one is just who, uh, going into the elbows and the first one. That's number two. Then we did the handoff. Handoff's my third basic. Then simply after you do it, just do the pinch. That's the fourth basic. So I just pinch that. After you do the handoff, you pinch it together. So that's the four, four variables I want you to add into your hoobit. Okay, I'm continuing on with Hubud. We're in the upper 20s now, still a few to go. We're in the Seco's now. So Seco is the elbow. So if you remember, we were stopping it and passing it and just drilling here. So I'm gonna continue on with this. Now what I want you to think about is if you see the elbow coming in, I want you to pull it past. That's it. So I just kind of pull it right at the tricep and I draw it right past me. So if it's at a distance where I feel safe enough to where I'm not going to guide it into my face, I pull it past. So this is what they call, call pa'awis, or parry it. So just parry it right past the face, okay? So that's it. So just roll with that a little bit. All right, let's slow it down. Pull it and then continue on. It's just like when I stopped it and I raised it, right? But this time I pull it and I raise it. That's it. So I just pull it and then I raise it past. All right, let's go into the next one. Now, let's say he hits the bicep. In fact, I'm going to do it from the punch. Let's say I punch, he passes it, and bang, he gets the bicep. Now, hopefully I'm not that damaged where I can't survive, but you know we have to train, keep going. If I get hit, it's not over. I have to survive, so now I want you to go into umbak. Remember umbak, the wave? All right, so we're, we'll just do it out of the drill. So if we're going in the elbow drill, and then all of a sudden he nails that bicep, I want you to wave over and then give it back. So a lot of people call this single arm hubud. It's humbuck in our system. See it? So if he gets it, or even if he's in route and I know I can't get it, I raise it and I give it back. He raises it. So before we get that bang, hopefully I've raised it out of the way. Okay, so this is unbuck. Okay, slow it down so they can see it. This is humbuck. You see that? Okay. 
So now, continuing on, let's go into the elbows again. From the elbow, now you've already done the knee from the one for one, when we were out here doing one for one and I knee and he scoops it. Now I want to do it from the, uh, the elbowing. So, elbow, please. Elbow jump, yeah. So now I go here. He should scoop and then come back with an elbow. So watch this. He scoops and he comes right back with the elbow. He's going to do it to me now. He knees. I scoop and I come right back with the elbow. You see it? Scoop, elbow in. So he's going to knee. I scoop and I elbow right back in. Let's slow it down. So I knee, he scoops, and then right there he would sink that in. Okay? Same thing. He comes in at me. I scoop and then I elbow him. Okay, it's not too hard. You'll feel, even if you don't see the knee coming, you'll feel it because it's very tactile and you'll feel the body shift and you know, uh-oh, something's going on downstairs, you better wipe and take care of yourself. So let's review this. From the Seco drill, the first one we had was Pa'awis. He just pulls it past. The next one, he nails it, humbuck. You see that? All right, and then we went into the knee, he scoops it. Sorry about that, it's okay. Do it again. There. There, that's it. This is gonna bring me to the last one that I wanna show. Double elbow, I elbow, ride it down, and then I elbow the face. He elbows up, rides it down, and he comes right back at my face. Now we're doing the double elbow. That's it. You see it? So I sink the first elbow, I turn with the other elbow. I stop, bridge, elbow, trap it, elbow. Stop, bridge, elbow, trap, elbow. All right, slow it down. Okay, time. Okay, that's the next four that I want you to do in the Hubud series. Okay, continuing on. Single hand Hubud, got a little more to go. Troy comes in, let's swing over on this side. All right, so from it, you have all the four variables and we have the two transfers. Now do you understand what I mean by that? You have the clockwise, counterclockwise, wipe under, wipe over. He can, if I go over, he can grab the elbow. If I go under, he can grab the elbow. That's the six concepts you have now. All right, so let's add two more. So as we're going, there are times where if he's pressing in enough, and if I feel it, I can hyperextend the fingers. It might look a little weird, but you get it once in a while. So let's just flow. We'll see what we'll get. Okay? So it doesn't always occur, and if you lose it, you just go back into your basic flow. But if I feel it, I just jam the finger. So it'll be like, and then you're just going to keep going into the punching. If you feel this, and if you can get that flexion, then you just go back into the punching. Okay? But for drill's sake, I'll just go here with it, and I let it go. Okay? So we just flow. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, that's it. Good. That's okay. That's what we're doing. So, there. So now, I just get that little bend in it. It doesn't mean it's going to jam it, break it. Never know. Hopefully it might if I need it to. But I might influence him into something else, okay? So when we go, just hyperextend it and go. And you'll see, if, if you just do it here, it's not much. If I could turn the body and pull it, it tends to really sink it on. You don't need to do that all the time. My main training is to just get to the wrist and turn. And then if you, the, it's gonna sound weird, the further out I get without losing the fingers, the better it hyperextends it. But obviously I could lose it. If so, just keep going. There, okay? That's hyperextending the fingers. So let's go to the last point that I want to bring out. 
The last point is I'm going to hit the biceps. So they hit it and they continue. So we just, just flow a little bit. Yeah, that's it. Ah, go. Okay. It's all right. See, I just blast it and go. Okay? So he goes here, and I go. That's it. So if you, somebody grabs you, you can hit it. See, that's going to hit the face, and then you can go. For drill sake, we hit it, and we just go here. But if you were to grab me, I go, Pat, and then I just go into my boxing. Okay? So that's it. So we wipe. If I see the opportunity, I hit it. Okay? If I feel the hands are into me, and I don't feel like I could get up there, that's where the hyperextension can go. See, you can get the hyperextension. Or I can come underneath. See, I trap it back to that hammer anvil. I hit it. They can hit the face, or you can hit it and then just take them. Okay, so just play with that a little bit. Whoops. That's it. That's it. Okay, okay. Ooh. <laughs> Go, yes. Ooh, that's good. Yeah, there. So just turn it into a game. You gotta have fun with it or you're never gonna grow. So you just play, you challenge each other a little bit. You get your friend, he goes, oh, I'm gonna get you back. And you just have a good time. Otherwise, you're not gonna keep training this stuff. So this is single hand who bud. Let's finish off the one, two, three series. So Troy comes in. We're going to go parry. Good thing, now when he hooks, I want to elbow that hand. So remember, we elbow the knuckle. You got to remember, if it's a super wide hook, it might not be the time to do this technique. But if we go one, we get the good thing, I just want to elbow the hand. So again, parry, good thing, elbow. Parry, good thing, elbow. Parry, good thing, elbow. After you do it, then you can go right back into your, your uh, flow. Parry, good thing, elbow, and then just go into the flow. One, two, three, one, two, three, and then one, two, three, one, two, three, all right? Again, one, two, elbow, one, one, right there, all right? Last time, parry, gunting, elbow it, one, two, three. Just go back into the flow. All right, last one, the last one that I want you to have. We're going to parry, you're going to hit the gunting, and I want to go back to the inside, remember that? Early on, we did that. Parry, gunting, inside, but now I grab the back of the head, snap the elbow, I push the face. One, two, three. So parry, gunting, back, grab, elbow, backhand. One, two, three. Last time. Parry, gunting, back, grab, snap the elbow, push. One, two, three. And not the last time. Let's do it again. Parry, gunting, backhand, grab it. Snap the elbow, push off. One, two, three. Three. So that will end the one, two, three series. All right, continuing on with the next series, I'm going to bring Troy in. All right, this one, I want, to, I want you to think if he's got it, I'd like you to pull back as you did before. You will remove the hand. I'd like you to press the arm over, go in, and standing choke. For drill's sake, he's going to insert his arm, clear it, and he grabs my neck on the other side. I remove it, pass it, go in, choke. He puts his hand through, grabs. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And one, two, three. So let's just drill for a little bit and let him watch. Remove and pass. So, go a little slow. I remove it, I pass it, and I come into the standing choke. He comes right through and he grabs. One, two, Let's go in and choke. If you look at my hands, when I, I remove it, I capture it, press it over. I'm going to go across. This hand can grab and just collapse and choke. For drill sake, I let him come in, re-grab. 
It just lets me do it left and right. I want to come pro become proficient left-handed and right-handed. That's it. So one, two, and three, and go into the choke. Okay, let's finish off this triple jab series. Now he's gonna come back in. All right, so we're gonna go one, two, remember the panastas. This time I want him to hammer the bicep. Let me swing you around. Okay, so we go jab, jab, panastas, hit the bicep. Hook, cross, hook. Do that a couple times. One, two, panastas, hit. One, two, three. One, two, mm, mm, mm. do it again, just go. Yes, that's it. One, two, mm, mm. one, two, three. 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 Slowly. One, two, cuts in, hammer. One, two, three. One, two, cut in, hammer. One, two, three. Let's go a little slower. One, two, cut in, hammer it. One, two, three. That's it. So now the next one. We're going to continue with the panastas. One, two. He's going to cut in with the panastas. He hits. Now this represents my head, so he's going to grab it, elbow, backhand. One, two, and three. Now watch. If, uh, if I didn't have the gloves on, he would go one, two. He's going to hammer in. That's it. And then backhand and right on me. You see it? But with the focus mitts, one, two. Cut in, hammer, elbow, backhand, one, two, three. Again, slow, parry, punch, cut in, hammer, elbow, backhand, one, two, three. Slow again, parry, punch back, cut in, hammer, elbow, backhand, one, two, three. Just slow with it a little bit. Good. One, two, mm. time. Do it real slow once for him. One, two, cut in, hammer, hook, cross, hook. All right, now the last one in the panastas that I want you to do, he's going to come in. One, two, he cuts the panastas, he still hits it. Now he's going to elbow, you see it? And then the backhand, and one, two, three. If I didn't have gloves on, this is what he would do. One, Two, he cuts in, hammers the bicep, elbows the face, backhands, one, two, three. You see it? All right, so now let's just do that slow a few times. One, two, cut in, hammer, elbow, backhand, one, two, three. Slow. Cut in. Nice. One more. Slow. Parry. Cut. Last time. Parry. Cut in. Again, I'm going to make you do it one more time. Real slow. Parry. Punches back. Cut in. He hammers it. Elbows the face. Backhands the mitt. That's it. So now the last one that we're going to cover and we're done. He's going to go slow. Parry. He punches back. Now he jams it as it comes out. Okay, if I start to force this hand, he's going to go to the split entry. He swings it around and backhands, hook, cross, hook. Okay, so if I didn't have mitts on, one, two, when I go, he jams me. He hits, swings it and hits, one, two, three. That's it. Not too hard. You can get it. One, two, split, punch, hook, one, two, three. The problem's going to lie in the feeder, making sure when he goes here that I push forward with the cross. Swing around, hook, cross, hook. Again, slow, two, jam, push forward with the cross. One, two, three. Let me drop the mitts for one second. I just want you to see this. One, two, jams. Now I've got to punch with that. You see it? If I don't, it's not, uh, he's not going to be able to do the swing around. It's going to stall there. He should just keep boxing. But if I push forward, see how he shifts out? He swings over and hits. One, two, three. So let me grab my mitts again. 
Okay, so we go one, two, jam, shove. One, two, jam, shove. One, two, jam, shove. Last time. One, two, jam, shove. That's it. So dead slow, dead slow. Swing around so we can see it from the side. All right, so one, two, jam it. I punch, he hits me for that, swings around. One, two, three. That's it. This is the end of the series of the triple jab. This is the Focus Mitt Arm Drag series that we do. It's pretty short, uh, but I feel it has some value. There are only four, four sections to it, so Joe's going to come in. All right, the first is he just lets me hit the mitts. So it's one, two, three. He's going to block it. Even before I get to that mitt, I want him to parry me off. So right there, I just want to uh, roll and backhand it. So one, two, as he blocks, I unbuck. Unbuck is that wave. Remember that? When he blocks, I roll around it. Okay, so one, two, and I backhand. One more time. Now, as soon as I backhand, I arm drag down. If he stays down and doesn't raise up, I hook in right here. So let me do that again. So slowly, one, two, three, backhand, drag, hook in. Now, right now, I'm just going to roll him over. He's going to drop the mitt down so I can drop my knee on it. And see how he kind of squ uh, squirms out to where he faces me, to where... <laughs> He just lets me have some clean, straight shots. If he were to stay uh, uh, like here, it's hard for me to hit. So he just kind of curls around, <laughs> and he just lets me get the straight blast in there. OK? Going back. OK, so you're going to go. One, two, three, hit. Drag. He stays down. I put him over. I drop the knee, <laughs> and I just punch. One more time. So. <laughs> Drag, grab, flip him over, drop the knee, and then just go in with the punches. Slowly, and I'll go into the next section. One, two, three, hit. Drag, grab, turn him over. The focus mitt should land there, drop your knee. He turns in, one, two, three. Just come on up. Next one. If we go, one, two, three. And I hit and I drag down. Sometimes he pulls back up. If he pulls back up, I want you to raise the face up. He'll put the mid out. One, two, three. Cool thing about this is one, two. When I hit and I drag, if he, li if he lifts up, I help him up. I don't want him to look. He's going to try to look at me. As soon as he looks, you go. Okay? I could also turn it. So let me see if the camera could catch it. Turn here a little bit. As I push up, I go like that. I just try to get my hand in his face to where he can't look at me. So <clears throat> we go. One, two, three, hit. Drag. I lift, turn him. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> Drag. Lift, turn. <laughs> and I hit. Spin you this way. So one, two, three, hit. Pull, lift, turn. One, two, three. One more time. One, two, three, hit. Drag, lift, turn. <laughs> That's it. That's the number two. Now, three and four are easy because it's actually just pieces of one and two in three and four. So he's going to parry, or I'm going to parry. Parry, gunting. One, two, three. I hit, I drag, he stays down, I roll him over, drops the mitt, I drop my knee. One, two, three. Do it from this side. Parry, gunting. One, two, three, hit. Drag. He stays down. I flip him. Drop my knee. <laughs> Come on back up. Do it on this side. All right. Parry. Gunting. One, two, three. Hit. Drag. He stays. I lift him. Drop the knee. <laughs> okay. Number four. Parry. Gunting. One, two, three. I drag him. He lifts. I lift him up. I could turn it over. One, two, three. <laughs> Last time. One, two. One, two, three. Hit, drag, lift, turn. One, two, three. So let me review all four. Come on this side. 
First one, I punch. One, two, three, hit, drag. He doesn't come up, so I roll him over. Drop the knee. One, two, three. Second one. One, two, three. I drag, he lifts up. I turn, turn it over. One, two, three. Third one, jab, gunting. One, two, three, hit, pull. He doesn't lift up. Turn him down, drop the knee. One, two, three. Last one, parry, gunting. One, two, three, drag, he lifts, turn the face. One, two, three. That's it, that's the end of that series. Okay, coming back in. Now this is more long range who, but I'm gonna start with. They call it seek the path. So if we're at a, a further distance, it's just a drill, you have to remember this, but it's actually, they say doing who, but with your fingertips, okay? You'll love this. All right, so when we go, same thing, just out here. So it's basically the same as going one for one, but they just go at, at distance. See, because later they want the finger, uh, to grab the hand. See, they wanna go into the finger locks. So it doesn't mean you're going to sit out there and fight with somebody like that and grab it. But if it's out there, you know that you can get that lock. So you're just learning how to be tactful and how to reach in and get the hand to get the lock. Sorry, I should have got the wrist on that one. All right, so right there. So this is just seek the path. So just think of it as just fingertip who, bud. Okay, so this is going to bring us into the next one. I'm going to come back in. So from the one for one, they call us attached who, bud. So now when we go, yes, that's it. There it is. So if you look, this arm's just waving back and forth. I, I'm inserting my arm, and I'm just kind of monitoring his arm and his hands where they're at. This is attached who, bud. I, actually, I have it at the end of the list, but this is one of the things I actually teach people at the start because it's really easy for them to just go like this, okay? It's pretty simple. And I have you insert your arm, insert your arm, insert your arm, insert your arm, okay? Not too hard to do. So we have seek the path, and then we can come in for the attached. Okay, that's it, okay? Then, the last thing I want you to do for right now is arm breaks. So from the one for one, I want you to pop, turn it over, and pop. Be careful, it is hyperextension is what you're after, but he will just trade it. So we just flow a little bit, and when you feel like it, you just go here, and you can put it in, you can go right back, or I can go one, two, put it back, or I can just go right for the, last, uh, the, the latter part of it, the second stage in it. So you can get the double, get a double jump. One, turn it over two. See it? I go one, I turn it over two. Do it. One, two, that's it. Okay, so one, sorry, that was two. <laughs> one and two. There it is, go slow so they could see it. Pop it, turn it over, pop it. Remember, you are hyper extending, hyper extending. Okay, he will go hyperextend, hyperextend. Or you could just go for singles. I could just do that and go back into my who bud, or I can do that and go to my who bud. Do the same thing, wherever you feel it. Hyperextend, so we go back to the who bud, or hyperextend, okay? So that's it, hyperextend, hyperextend. So that's the three that I want you to have. Seek the path, attached who bud, and then arm breaks. All right, continuing on, we're gonna go into kneeing the fist. So watch, we're gonna go one, right from the angle five, who bud? Just roll with it, go. You guys better have this part, we knee it. See it? So when he goes, he pulls it right down into the knee. So I go, pat, and then I just punch, okay? They knee the fist. So there, that's it. That's it, so slow it down. What I'm doing is I'm trying to knee it and I'm trying to hit it. Now, when it's uh, a, a vertical punch, it might not be as good, but when it's this way, I can hurt the knuckle, okay? So when we go here for training, 
This might not be the time I'd use it, but we're not doing hubud against a boxer's cross right now. It's going to feel a little weird. So we just go vertical fist for training. Okay, and then when it comes in, I knee it, and then I continue on. They have variations where they'll knee it and they'll kick if you want to do that, if you want to add it. But the main thing is, is just to get the knee in. So I knee, and then we go. Okay? So really slow, knee, punch. Knee, punch. So knee, punch. Okay? And if, again, if you care to, you can knee and kick. Try you can do it. So knee, and he kicks whatever's closest. If I'm in this lead, Troy will knee, kick the front leg, or if it's this lead, even though it's the opposite hand to the foot, he will kick the front leg. Okay, so that's the first one that I want to do. So now, we're going to go back to one for one. Okay, so as I'm flowing in one for one, we're going to go into the wrist lock. So watch, I pull it down. Now, it doesn't mean I'm going to hold him and I'll just walk him around like this. That's not what this is about. This is about hurting it and then continuing on, on the fight. So when we go here with the one for one, see, what he'll do is he will pass it down, grab it, and see, he will, just wants to, again, hyperextend it, like, whoop, get that quick shot, and then go. See it? So as we go here, I just swing it. So I go pat like that, and then I would just continue on with the fight. But for training, we just go like this. We go here, got it, and then I let it go. And then Troy will do it to me, got it, lets it go. So, we just kind of smart each other. Oh, feel it? Yeah, good, go. Okay, so he brings it down, go. So watch. I pass it, sweep down, put it right into the bicep, grab the elbow, give it a little squeeze for now, and let it go. Later, you won't even put it into the bicep. You'll just kind of hit it as you go. I don't want to do it too much. But that's where the idea is with this. So you do it, Troy. Pull down. That's it. And then you go, okay? So, right here, and I continue on, okay? I'm sure there are other variations like going into the chicken wing and into the grappling from there, but we're not going to go there right now. I just want you to get that hyperextension of the wrist, do it, and just continue on with the drill. Okay, now the last one I want to show before we take a break with Hubud again is the double elbow. Remember the double elbow we were doing? I would hit the elbow, and I would turn the elbow. Troy hits right there. Now we're going to learn how to transfer that from left to right side. Okay, so now I want you to think of this. As he goes in the elbow, I move it over and I take the other side. Do you see it? As that first elbow comes in, I wipe and I go to the other side. Let's slow down even more. Right there, he could wipe through. Trap, elbow. I'm going to take it back so you can see it. So he goes through. Trap, there. So right there, he goes through, trap, elbow. Goes through, trap, elbow. So this is off the double elbow. If he did nothing, I would just return this elbow. But if he sees it coming, he slips through, and then he would go back here. You see it? Go through, yeah, go through. That's it. So if we just play a little bit, just play a little. So let's slow down. So he goes through. Goes through, goes through. All right, so let's just free it up a little bit and just start to go. So once I feel it go over, I just shoot to the other side. Nice. Okay, so you're elbowing, elbowing. When he feels that elbow go, if he wants to steal it from me, passes and elbows the face. Okay, so now you had the three. Knee the fist, you can add the kick, wrist lock, or you have the first elbow to the second elbow switch. All right, we've reached the end. Now I'm gonna give you the last three that I want you to know. Joe's gonna come in. All right, so in Hubud, we have one for one switch. Now, I showed you the earlier switches from the five where we'll transfer side. Now, we're going to do it out of the one for one. So, right now, when you're in the one for one, 
to go from the right hand striking to our left hand striking. I want to pull, he's going to raise up, block it, he's going to bridge me over, and that transfers our side. Okay, let me do that again, really slow for you. I pull, he blocks with the, pull, the arm that I'm pulling, he wedges through, traps, and then we're back to the original side. Okay, so right now we we'll just flow with it a little bit. I'll go slow so you can kind of see what's going on. I pull, block, wedge over, opposite side, pretty good. I pull it, bridge it over to the opposite side. That's it. So I pull it. When he feels me pull and go to hit, he raises it. He bridges over, traps. It transfers us from the right hand hit to the left hand hit. I pull it. He pulls up into the block, wedges over, and then transfers it back to the right hand hit. That's the one for one switching from left to right side. Now, we're going to go into what they call silo. Do you remember that silo position where we drop down? We're going to put it with this one-for-one one drill. So at the start, when I usually start someone, we don't even go to the ground with it. We just walk, walk. Looks a little strange. You'll see where I'm going to go with this. Okay, the better the student gets at it and the more comfortable he is, the lower we go with it. Okay, time. Now, when you're doing the CELO position, in the one for one, I want it to where this hand, when this hand is coming in with the first strike, you're in this crouched position. All right, so. So we're doing two reps basically to get from side to side. That's the hard part for people to get. So now let me explain why. All right, the last one that I want you to do from this CELO position is going to be to go to the arm breaks or to the arm throw. Remember the arm breaks that we did where we had this break, that break. So when we're in Hubad, we start to go to the CELO position. See the break? So as I uh, just uh, go in, one, two, I'm trying to hyperextend and throw, okay? Or when we go here, I'm trying to throw this way. Doesn't mean my partner's got to do the silo with me. For training, start to do the silo. I go in. It's okay. Do you see it? So as he comes in, I am going to throw, or as I bring it over, I am going to throw with the silo. Okay, so that's the three I want you to have. One for one switch, silos, and silo with arm break or the throw. All right, continue with Hubud. We're in the next section. Let's go to the feet. So. Troy comes in, he has the neck. I want you to think of slapping the hand off and then taking this inner leg. You're gonna pull it and off balance him or take him down. So again, so if we're playing with the neck, go just anything you wanna do. So we're sitting here and we're just we'll slip in, right? And I blast it and whatever I wanna do, so I slap it and I go to the low line. He's gonna wipe my arm, step out, replace his foot, and then he's gonna go in for this uh, sweep right here. Okay, I want to hook it and then I go to the other leg. He will wipe it and then he's going to take it back. So he goes to the Willis on the inside. I want the Willis on the outside. You see it? So right here, that's it. So right there, that's it. That's, let me slow it down. One, I move it. I replace and I step. I want this takedown. He slaps it off, sweeps. 
he wants this leg sweep right here. Sweep a little bit. He wants that leg sweep. So I just, before he can get that, I counter it. That's it. It's just a little leg game. And any time that I want, I can go back to the neck. So you see it? And slip it. So we can go back to the elbow. So this is what I want you to start to do is start to put it all together. So I go here. That's it. See, it so becomes a big game. So it could be double hand, right? And we can go into all the things within that. I can throw the knee, scoops. It's okay. See, I can just scoop and go right to the leg if I wanted. See it? See it? So it's just a game. See, it's cool because you start to challenge each other with it, start to come up with things, different ways of going into it. See it? Yeah, there it is. See, right here, go back here. There it is. Okay? That's it. Okay? So now, after you get the legs together, start to put it all together and just mix it up, see what you come up with. All right, you've made it through the DVD series. Now, everything that we do, we can separate and just kind of fragment it to where it is playful drill. And that's the way a lot of our training is. What we do is we don't do the whole drawn out series the whole time. Sometimes we isolate the motion. You know, as you've learned throughout this series, uh, we'll pick five or six movements and we'll just put it together and we'll just keep going over and over and over again. And we try to make it fun and playful. If it's not fun, you're not going to keep doing this. You know, nothing's harder than just this static motion where you're just tired going, oh, when will it end? We try to make everything a game and everything playful. That way you're going to keep on coming back. You're going to keep training it. And you're going to have a lot of success with it. You'll, you'll see a lot of growth within yourself. So just train safe and train hard. That's all I ask. And be cognitive of your partner and what you're doing to them. If you put too much on them, they're not going to want to play with you anymore. And you're going to see that you lose training partners. So just be aware of that. Okay, and also in closing, I'd like to thank Cold Steel, first and foremost, for having the faith in me and letting me do this video series. And I'd like to thank all my helpers and all my crew that have been behind me in the, in the making of this video.